So what I'd like to ask you about first is when, when before the war, when you were growing up as a Jew in your town, what was life like then? Uh, so that was very smooth, hardly any problems. I went to the two kinds of schools, either elementary school or higher school. Uh -huh. I went uh, to the higher school. It was not, you did not have to go to the higher school. It was, they had to pay due, dues, and uh, most of the Jewish children went to the higher school. Okay. And your father was a butcher? Butcher, yeah, but he, he was wholesale. Uh -huh. More meat packers than a butcher. And he had grown up in your town? Yes. My and grandparents on my father's side were they were born to. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, they were in that little town of Dieburg, as you wrote it down, there were Jews, I just read it up in one of the books, in Hesje, and in that town, since, 50, since 1300 and uh, some, they had already broke a little broke room in 1380 or whenever it was. I mm -hmm. have the papers here and can verify it later. How big was the Jewish community at that time when you were growing up? The Jewish community was about, I would say, two, three hundred people. And uh, was your family Orthodox? Yes, there was only or they were either Orthodox or uh, conservative. No, no conservatives. We had only two directions in where we, where we lived: either Orthodox or you didn't believe in anything. But oh. now we had only two or three who were not Orthodox. Uh huh. Everybody else was Orthodox. Was there just the one synagogue then? We had one synagogue, yes, that was uh, torn down from the congregation. It was torn down. Right. Because it was old. I have the pictures of it, if you want to have it. And we built a new synagogue, I think, in 1928 or 1929. So, uh, before you left Germany, the, the synagogue oh, yeah, was still there? Long before. Mm -hmm. I, I left uh, 38, that was about 28. And incidentally, that synagogue was not burnt down on the crystal night. Not turned down, not burnt or, or uh, damaged the crystal night because of some, uh, somebody had a lead on it. Mm -hmm. When you were growing up in uh, Dyberg, Dieburg. Uh, yeah. What kind of activities were you involved in, in the youth activities or Zionist groups? Well, uh, or other were, interest groups? There wasn't much to do. And you had enough to do when over there you studied or you, you failed. Mm -hmm. And I made my, my matura when I was uh, 17 years old. I got my matura. And uh, we had no clubs or stuff like that. I had a very interesting hobby. I was a shortwave uh, radio amateur. Oh, you were shortwave? And there was, a matter of fact, 1928, I had a write-up in all the papers. I was the youngest German radio amateur. Is that right? As a matter of fact, I still am today. Oh, I was going to ask if you yeah. were. I still have my set. I just worked on it. Uh -huh. I had the other day, I spoke to Israel, Shalom Israel. Did you? Right, and, uh, to Mali, uh -huh. West Africa, Germany, England, all over. What a wonderful hobby. It really right. is great. Yeah. Now, when did you first feel the restrictions of Nazi Germany? About what age were you? Oh, till I graduated, made my matura, I hardly didn't have any anti-Semitic uh, encounters whatsoever. The boys, came to the house, we made our school work together, I went to their house, so I eat in my house, I didn't eat in their house because of uh, ritual uh, conditions, we were kosher, mm -hmm. naturally, and uh, there was nothing, really nothing till 1930. Till 1930? Till 19, when I graduated, you know, got my matura. Uh-huh. I was ever alive, was neither teacher nor uh, boys, you know, or girls, had any had any complaints whatsoever. It was a harmonic. Uh, it was just 
very People promoting. People got it right. And then in 1930, what kind of changes did you start to see? Well, I went into Frankfurt to the university, and I couldn't say it had direct, uh, no attacks or something, but you could feel, you know, it was uh, it yeah, was in the could, air. Mm -hmm. you, there was nothing real specific other no, than you nothing. could just... No, I, I never got, just got hurt pretend. or anything, not, uh, not ever, since I was, uh, when I was there. Well, in 1930, how were people in your town responding to the Nazi rule? I really couldn't couldn't tell you. And Only just those, still uh, nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Um, no. No. Nobody called you chew or something. You know. Yeah. Maybe the kids sometimes. You know, but uh, uh -huh. never any. Uh, but no, still not in that. No. Okay. Um, what about other members of your family? Were they having any problems? And no, everybody was doing not okay. Either. I do not know whether my father in his business had any problems. Mm -hmm. But till now, and said he sure didn't have any any problems. Business. When life. when did you really start seeing the problems? When did you really start seeing the problems? Well, I went and in after I left uh, college or the University of Frankfurt, I went to my uncle in his uh, factory and uh, What see kind a, of factory did he have? He had a uh, shirt uh -huh. manufacturing in Duisburg. Duisburg? Duisburg, yeah. D-U-I-S-B-U-R-G. That's near Cologne. Near Cologne. Near Cologne. Say, say you felt even so it was uh, not direct but indirect, you know. Uh-huh. It was just kind of in the right, air. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, well, when was it that, uh, and what were the factors involved that made you feel that you need to leave? I had a small apartment rented uh -huh. with some uh, Gentile people. What year was this? That was... 34, 35, 1934, 35, around that time. And uh, he he was uh, a Nazi and uh, a good friend of mine. Who was a Nazi and that was a good and friend? A good of friend of mine. Uh -huh. And when he came back from meetings, he told me what was going on and he told me, get out. You know, n not, not that you say, uh, get out, you know. Right. But it but would be smart to get out, you know, mm -hmm. otherwise uh, you, you, will, you will be getting killed. Mm -hmm. I know what's going on, I said, get out, get out, you know. And he told his wife and he came to me to plead to get out, but I still didn't want to go out because uh, I had such a secure and uh, fine position. We had a, a brother of my uh, mother, I was a sole owner, and uh, it, it was a leading shirt factory in Germany, mm -hmm. what we had. Uh, At this time, had your brothers already left, Joe and Eric? No, uh, my brother Joe left 1937, one year before me. Joe left in 1937. And Eric left about uh, a little bit after me, 1938. And he emigrated to... He was the one that went to Cuba. He went to Cuba, uh -huh. yes. Okay. And so your friend who had gone to the meetings uh, had advised you to leave. To and, leave. And, and we all, uh, he couldn't uh, let me know strong enough how important it would be to leave. Uh-huh. He did I still had it. no. Per I still had no personal uh, run-in or whatever trouble. Uh-huh. No trouble at all. No trouble at so all. it was your friend who actually encouraged you to leave. Right. And so what did you have to do in order to get prepared to leave? You have to, to uh, have your papers from here, have every David of support, that you would not uh, be a burden to the state or to the community. 
Uh huh. You had to have an affidavit from of the support. Of support so, from, from here. Somebody who had to in the United States. In the United States, somebody had to vouch that he would take by would be in trouble that he financially difficulties he would uh, take care of it so that the community, the town, township or wherever I was, or the state or the government wouldn't have uh, to take care of me. Now who was supporting you in the United States for that affidavit? Uh, a second cousin. Second cousin. And how long had your cousin lived in the United States? Pardon me? How long had your cousin lived in the United States? He lived a long time, in, in, in the 20s. Uh-huh. So he, had, he was established. Yes. Now, was he in New York? Is that why he you went to New York? He was in New York, yes, in the state of New York. Not in New York City, but uh, in Staten Island. Mm -hmm. So, um, was it very difficult to uh, get that process going of getting the affidavits? Yeah, it was difficult, but it was time-consuming. And a lot of paperwork, you know, uh, when you work with government agencies, how, how it is. Uh, later on, we can go more into it because I have the papers and so on uh -huh. okay. to show what, what was involved. Uh, did you have to, um, where did you apply? Did you write your cousin? Was that the first step? Yes. And no, the first step probably was that it's a long time ago, you know, uh -huh. 50 years yeah, or more. A lot to you, you wrote to the American consul in Frankfurt to ad advise you what uh, is necessary in order to emigrate. You know what uh, you had to have some medical uh, proof that you are sound and well, mm -hmm. and had to get the affidavits. And then you had you got a number, and uh, you had to wait till the number was uh, due, was called. Do you remember about how long this process took? Oh, at that time it was uh, maybe uh, six to nine months. Six or nine months. And what about your parents? Where were they at this time? So they still were in Deburg. In Deburg. There's a big story with my parents where I will come to it when they emigrated. Please, you want it now? please go. Go ahead. My parents went, emigrated to Cuba, and the ship was Orinoco. The ship what? The name of the ship was Orinoco, O-O-R-I, I give you the, the okay. details later, Orinoco. And that ship was a ship that followed the ship St. Louis. St. Louis was a ship that went to Cuba and was turned back because uh, the president of Cuba at that time, as we found out later, did not get uh, money enough, underhanded money, uh, and he was in the immigration department. His, his own government mm -hmm. didn't give enough him give, give, give him enough on the bribe. Mm -hmm. So that or as uh, Saint Louis came back. And right in Cuba, a lot of the Jewish people, not a lot, but quite a few committed suicide. That was St. Louis. And my parents came, when that happened, they were on the high sea. And as they found out that the ship didn't come, didn't, didn't wasn't allowed to land over there, the ship was sent back to Germany. Now comes very interesting chapter. What year was this that they were on the ship? Uh, that I have to look it up here. Okay. I wonder if we can stop for a moment. Mm -hmm. Here is a document. You want to read it in the record? It's in, I translated it. Uh-huh. Uh, this is the document of them getting off the ship. Okay. Yes. Um, Came back to Antwerp. This was 1939. 1939, yes. And and it says, Samuel and Sarah, who are your parents? My parents, yes. Have been returned from Antwerp. Antwerp, yes. On June 3rd, 1939, by steamship MS Orinoco. Is that the way you Orinoco. 
of the Hamburg America Line. This ship sailed on May 27, 1939 with 209 Jews from Hamburg to Cuba. The Jews wanted to immigrate to Cuba. Due to differences within the Cuban government, especially between the President of Cuba, the Director of the Cuban Immigration Department, the Cuban government declared the biases has invalid. Now, did they, uh, so they went back to Germany. And, 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 read contents, okay. that will be and so that will, this will tell me, okay. Due to the above mentioned circumstances, and because there was no other possibility to land the ship, the owners of the shipping lines decided to recall the MS Arunaco to Antwerp. By order of the, you're going to have to help me with this word, S Ober, S oh, the SS Oberführer, Ober Obersturmführer. Obersturmführer? Yes. Müller. That uh, the, the, one of the highest, the second highest uh, in the whole hierarchy of uh, uh -huh. uh, Heinrich Miller uh -huh. from the secret, poly, from the Gestapo, secret police Gestapo. Continue reading, please. Okay. The secret Federal Police Bureau Gestapo Berlin. No harsh, forceful measures shall be taken against these returnees. From here, they were ordered to return to their former hometowns. Right. The passports were confiscated. The Jews were referred to report to the State Police Bureau, Gestapo, or to the passport bureaus. To remain in Hamburg was denied for the Jews. Signed, Ghost, yeah, Police um, Inspector. Yeah, that's it. Now, in order to understand what that means is, that the Jews who returned were saved by that letter. Now, this is Hermann Miller. He's very often mentioned here in that book, The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. That same Hermann Miller put his own people in Polish uniforms, as you probably will recall, had them attack the Gleibitz or Breslau radio station, had them all killed in that process, in order, you know, that this, uh, the, the war started this way, really. Is that, that the Pol Poles attacked uh, Germany. That was the same the Miller same who, who le uh, why we did, I tried since, uh, since that document was found in the archives in Darmstadt, the next big town from where we lived, to get after it, we couldn't find out who he was, why he did it, because it's such the whole thing in the whole connection, what happened is so unbelievable. And uh, I give you both the original German and the translation, you know, maybe somebody can translate it even better than I can, to uh, believe that the Nazi uh, made it. There's more to it, you know. In Hamburg, say, uh, was more problems and, and trouble than in Dieburg because there was nothing uh, Mm -hmm. Before there was only the Christian night, and even that when they were had the Christian night, the synagogue was not destroyed. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole follow of uh, events, what we cannot find out, but was that it's almost like a, like a miracle. Was that sent to you, or was this? No, that was sent. To the land commissioner in 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 that little town, uh -huh. he received this here's his stamp. He received it on certain that date on the sixth of June, nineteen thirty-nine. Even the numbers on it. It comes from the Geheime Staatspolizei, G. Gestapo, Secret Government Police. In uh, in Hamburg and uh, was sent to that little town, you know, and so my parents went back like nothing happened. Naturally, my parents had nothing anymore. They had all the, but only what they had on their, uh, on their body, you know, and a little, uh -huh. uh, all their furniture was shipped already. It was already uh, shipped with the... It was already shipped, yes. To Cuba, the, all the way to Cuba. It operated to Cuba, but uh, that's a story by itself. It never came, came to Cuba. It was on, in... 
in the port of uh, on Holland, of Holland, uh -huh. somewhere it it got stuck there and never came through. But that is only material stuff. But I even uh -huh. think very negligible to even mention it. How did uh, Eric end up in Cuba? Was let's see, he was in he, 1938, and they at that time they still let it go, took him in. Okay. You know? And then there came, came a discrepancy between the president and the guy who was in charge of the immigration mm -hmm. department. He took all the money and didn't give nothing to the president and uh, under the table. And they said, that's it, no more. So we are who void. Was, okay. Who was uh, giving the affidavits in Cuba, did you have any family there, or was no, there a big Jewish have, community? Didn't, I do not, I do not recall him how it was, but uh, there was no problem till that time. You just bought a visa or whatever, paid a certain fee. Uh -huh. That was just in that time it happened that they declared wealth. That was 1939, uh, and, and that was 1938. Uh huh. If, now, if you want to take that to your uh, archives. Yes. I give that to you and give you the yes, original please. too. Do you, you already have a copy of this. This is oh, an I extra have, copy. I have a lot of copies okay. because I work with somebody in Germany on a book. Okay. What comes out. Did you, um, I guess you weren't part of the May, that was May family that was brought over here? We had nobody here. Uh-huh. Just the cousin in New York. Just the cousin in New York and he had, you know, he had to make his own living. So I, uh, Got myself a job and uh, couldn't get nothing in New York. Okay, Martha, we're back. Okay. Okay. Uh, speaking of uh, that Heinrich Müller again, uh -huh. who made uh, that, who gave that order, in order to understand the whole uh, the whole event, whole tragic event, you have to read up here in uh, William Shiros, the rise and fall of the Third Reich. He is several that uh, Heinrich Müller is uh, several times mentioned here, and that's one of the most gruesome Nazis. Today we know even more about it, as if it's, it was uh, discovered how he uh, put his own people, even if we take some uh, who were mentally defective, put them in Polish uniforms and had them attack uh, Germany. Rasa Rasa uh, radio station and had them all naturally killed off. And there's, there's more of a, I don't know, a puzzle, you know, what, why he did it. Naturally, we are eternally grateful to have our parents saved. It took a lot of things, and after they came back, to get them out again from Germany. Mm -hmm. And uh, we still have, there were cables getting back and forth from Germany to New York. My brother Joe stayed in New York. He got a job there. And uh, my parents sent telegrams, you know, what has to be done in order to expedite it because the handwriting was on the wall, uh, what, was ha what was happening. And uh, we were fighting against the deadline. And I have here some papers where we got some help. Or now, let's see. Well, we can go into that later on if you want to. I have here some more papers over here, too. Is there any of those? No. I want to have that letter from the Senator of Mississippi. Oh, that's nice. Here are some pictures of me at the time. You're yeah. a very handsome man. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Uh -huh. Here are some telegrams. These are all for the archives? or Pardon? Are these all for the archives? If you want them, you can have them for the archives. Good. I, I just want to make some more copies of it. If you oh, okay. This is a synagogue, is this uh, Yes, that, is a, that was a new synagogue. And this is had. in Natchez? That was in Diebrück, Germany. Diebrück, okay, I was gonna say. Diebrück. That is, a, that is a outside here. 
with the flagpoles. Uh huh. And set here. This it's is a beautiful inside. one. Very modern. You said that that was uh, built in 1929. 1929. Very right. mo modern for its time, wasn't it? Right. Right. Here are some That's beautiful. photocopies of uh, cables, what we sent in order to... First we got some cables here to show that my brother, my brother, Eric, my brother Eric was a condensation cable in Buchenwald. So was my Eric father. Eric was? Yes. And your father? And my father, yes. My father came free, I think, uh, here, here, here. John arrived well. Eric, out of uh, the concentration, came, and father will be soon out as we have uh, order. And, um, what year was that? That was December 16, 19... I haven't got the date on it here. Hold it a moment, please. Hold it a moment, please. It said, said that father, mother, and Eric are all together in Dibok. In other words, they were out of the conversation. So they were all together, in, Eric uh, and your father and, and your mother, mother, in 1939. That was about uh, two, or or three, three, two or three months after the crystal night. Mm -hmm. And then it must have been shortly after that that Eric went on to Cuba, is that yes. correct? Okay. And yeah. then your parents tried. Okay. But I don't understand the other dates. Oh yes, it's nineteen eighty eight, December sixteenth to AM seven forty two. That was it. I was I was in Mississippi in Natchez, so it was a three when, in when I went home. Yes. I went uh, to Natchez Mississippi. I stayed there one year. And stayed. I mean, what, what took you to Natchez? A job. I found a job. What kind of job? In New York, in a garment factory. So as, uh, oh, like you were doing in Germany. Right, right. That was my line. Mm -hmm. As a supervisor. And so you were there for one year. For one year, and I went back uh, to New York. And what year was this in the garment factory in Natchez? Pardon me? What year were you in Natchez? It's in 1938. 1938, when okay. I came, right? 1938, 1939. Okay. And then you went back to New York. I went back to New York, yes. That, that was... Uh, here are the original cables. Yeah, we're very brittle now. That shows all the work we had to put in in order we fought against the deadline. Oh, to at. get them to New York? To get my parents out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have some copies that I give you later. Here is my uh, driver license with a swastika on it. Yes, it is a swastika. And my uh, driver license. Mm -hmm. Here's something too. In 1934, my father got from, in the name of the Führer and the Chancellor, a uh, distinguished letter, you know, for working, for being, fighting for Germany in the First World War. Here's Were you, when you left Germany, were you able to bring a lot with you, or basically nothing? Nothing. nothing. Your papers to, and my papers I could take along. Nothing uh -huh. of value. I could take as many suits as I wanted, as many shirts as I wanted. You know, because nobody, I couldn't dispose of it. You know, there was there was for Germany. They needed uh, the money. You know, for an exchange. Mm -hmm. So everything we were allowed to take one Leica photo, Leica out. And they've got fifty dollar uh, board money to spend at the board on the board of the 
chips had brought you over. That was all. Here there is a better picture of the synagogue when it was uh, opened up on that mm, first that's day. Beautiful. Yeah. And that was an old synagogue that was torn down because it was built in the 18, somewhere in the 80s. Two pictures. And here. And you had all these when you came to America? Or yeah. did you get the. Uh, that's wait, wait. wonderful. Some of them yeah. I got sent over from some friends too. Uh -huh. But most of the pictures I had. Here's that's a letter from the United States Senate in my behave, you know. For the affidavit? No, not for the affidavit. It was a consulate in uh, Frankfurt. They oh. expedited. Okay. That's the way, you know, that helped a lot. Here is some some papers about that uh, Heinrich Müller. Here I give it to you. It is in German. The best on the Oh uh, yeah. Here is some When you went back to New York, Tom? when you went back to New York, yes, um, after Natchez, yes, uh, what did you do uh, at that time? What I did when I came back, uh -huh. I went together with two other men, and we opened up a small church factory in New York. Oh, you did. Now, were uh, you married at that time? Pardon me. Were you married? No. 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 Uh -huh. We married in 1943. Uh -huh. That was 1939 when I came back. Nineteen what? Nineteen thirty nine. Nineteen thirty nine. I came mm -hmm. back down and, and I started up the garment factory. Were these my friends of yours, any other refugees that helped start the garment one factory? One was a refugee and the other was a, uh -huh. or maybe two were, it's hard to say. What year did you move to Nashville? I nineteen thirty eight. And to no, Nashville. No, 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 no. To Nashville I I went first from uh, New York to Petersburg, Virginia. Why did you go to Petersburg? Because I opened up a factory there. Uh-huh. Okay. And sold the factory. Uh-huh. And was too young to retire. <laughs> so I went to Nashville, Tennessee. Did you if, have friends here? No. But I knew there was a factory for sale, a small factory for sale, and I wanted to do something. So I bought this factory in Liberty, Tennessee. Uh -huh. Where is that in relationship to Nashville? South, uh, I really don't know exactly. <laughs> Southeast, Southwest. Southeast. That's about uh, 50 miles away mm -hmm. from here. And uh, then I opened up another factory. I built a new factory in Woodbury, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I made a partnership in Tullahama. Tullahama? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the factory business brought you to Nashville. When you came to Nashville, did you uh, feel a, an acceptance here immediately and always? or? Well, I think that the Nashville is a real cast, casty uh, people, you know, so they stick to their own as a, as a whole. Nashville consists of two or three families. They're all in the married and all in uh -huh. the woven, you know. It's, uh, it, it, it's different than in the other uh, uh, towns where I lived. Uh -huh. Let's put it this way. Now, each family is more or less a, a group for themselves. Uh -huh. Yeah, I understand that. Let me take you back to when you first came to New York and uh, your cousin was your sponsor and your support mm -hmm. her. Did you live at your cousin's house when you first came to New York? No, I went to some other relative and uh, stayed there uh, about three or four weeks till I had that lined up down south. Uh -huh. Then I went to Mississippi. Well, it didn't take you long to get things lined up. It sounds like you had a lot of support. 
I did. I, I, fortunately, unfortunately, I had no support whatsoever. You had no support whatsoever. No. I, I had five. I saved myself over five hundred dollars the first year when I was in Natchez, Mississippi, and we opened up a shirt factory on the shoestring. I, I head over heels in debt. <laughs> <laughs> Bought some used machinery and started working. What do you think was the um, the reason that you were able to come to this country with practically nothing? And not practically, really it was nothing. It was really nothing. And then to um, turn that around so I had no other chance. I had to. Yeah, so it's do, just do or, determination. Do or, do or die. <laughs> do or die. So and, it's more of a survival. And then survival, then when my parents came, I got married meanwhile. Uh -huh. I had to pay the rent for my parents, and my wife had to pay the rent for her parents. But at that time, a 60-year-old man was an old man, couldn't get no more job <laughs> at now, that time. Oh, so your parents were living in New York? When they yes. first came over? Yes. And they lived? They stayed in New York all the time. And uh, they stayed there? Right. And what year did they die? What year were, did your parents die? Or have they? When the, I, have it, I have to give oh, it to okay. you later. I have to. So, um, so they lived in New York. And um, were you living in New York at the time that they arrived? Yes. Uh huh. And. Uh, then Joe also lives in New York, your brother, yes, and he's yes. still living. Yes, he's still in New York. And where's Eric now? Still in New York. He's still in New York. Right. Okay. Um, let me go back a little bit to um, when your parents came over. Okay, they went on the boat to Cuba. They came back. And at that point, they went back to their hometown, mm -hmm. Deburg. And then, how much longer afterwards was it before that they came to New York? About between one and two years. Between one and two years. Right. Now, how uh, was it? Did your parents have this difficult time assimilating into the New York New York yes, life? Yes, very bad. Elderly people had a very very hard time. Uh -huh. Very hard. The, the main thing was the language. Uh -huh. you know, if you are 60 years old, you don't easily take a, to another language. You easy, don't easily learn it. You know, that was the main problem, you know. That, uh, so the language, language was barrier. most difficult. Okay. And were they, was the uh, Jewish community there strong enough to make them feel at home? Were there other people, there were certainly other people well, in their situation. Oh yeah. Well, I didn't get quite guess it. Did they, um, did they have a good synagogue and Jewish community oh, yeah. that was very, in very supportive? Yeah. Yes, but uh, they were not supportive, you know, they had to do their own stuff. Uh-huh, I understand. You were raised Orthodox. Yes. And now that you are here and in Nashville and settled, um, I am conservative. I'm conservative. I belong to the Western Synagogue. Uh huh. Right. I had to give. I had to, you know, because I could not uh, keep the Sabbath anymore the way I wanted to. But, uh, yeah. Mm hmm. And that must have been. It was a very difficult decision too. So you would say that some of your religious rituals and b beliefs ho had to change a little bit to alter to right, the American right. to way me. of life. Right, right. Mm -hmm. How long did it uh, take you um, to understand English? Was that very quick for you, or did that take you a long time? Did you have right. tutoring or it's language? It's hard to say. You know, it's you grow into it, and uh -huh. you always think that your English is perfect, you know. And <laughs> yeah. even so, uh, well, you do speak I well. am a radio uh, amateur, and when I speak with some foreign country or whatever, I, said, I feel a little of an accent. You know, that, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, that is, you know, when I speak to uh, West Africa, so also that I spoke to some, you know, that told me, do I, do I hear a little bit of an accent? And I said, yeah, you hear right. <laughs> <laughs> That's very astute of them to pick that up. 
Right. Especially over the radio operations. Right. Right. That's interesting. And but did were there any programs set up for when you came to America that you would go into an English a language class? situation or tutoring situation? Well, or? I could have gone, but I didn't have uh, the time for it. Mm -hmm. When I was in Edison with CBI, I worked two shifts mm -hmm. to get some money. And as I said before, I saved myself $500. Don't forget, that was 1938. Mm -hmm. $500 is as much as $5,000 oh, yeah. today. Yeah, and to that's save, a lot of to hard save it from to nothing. save that from and nothing is I really good. Paid, I, I mm -hmm. made about uh, Five dollars sent every week to my brother in Cuba. Five dollars I needed for myself, and ten dollars went to the bank. That's wonderful. That was a uh, good plan. No, no, it's <laughs> wonderful <laughs> when you have to do it. You know. Uh, yeah, but it was very astute of you to do that. Very smart of you to right. do the planning. What other members of your family did anybody? I mean, talking about aunts and uncles and grandparents, did anybody remain in Germany? Yes. Germany? Yes. I have my grandmother, mm -hmm. who we loved really dearly. She vanished. She did not make it. She probably uh, came to uh, Auschwitz. Mm. And I had uh, one, two, three, about five, six uncles and aunts who perished too. I did not make it. Were they at Auschwitz or? Auschwitz or what, whatever. Yeah, the very. We do not know. Uh huh. You don't know. Did you have other members of your family that did make it over besides your immediate family? No. No. Only the immediate family. Uh -huh. The brother of my mother came over too. A brother of your mother? My mother, yes. He and his wife were his baby. He, ex he had a baby and about uh, two months old, I came over, or three months old. When okay. You know, Ruth Tanner put together some oh. very good questions for us. Okay. She really did. Yeah. All right. Do you want to go uh -huh. into it? Okay. Um, one of the things I'd like to ask you is, when you first came to the United States, uh, what were some of the differences that you saw between the life in the United States and life in Europe? Life here was more hectic. So, more hectic and uh, the almighty dollar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you did see it, that the our culture was really surrounded and focused on making money. Has Not it, only making money, you know, but... Uh, but it was a primary it focus. Was primary yeah. me, and I f felt it double because I didn't have anything. I had to make the right. dollar. You know, I did. That would be the, so somebody gave me one every day, but that would have been the last thing I would have felt if I had to go to him for a handout, if I would, if you would, would invite me to dinner and I'd steal your silver. You would what? If I would have felt the same way uh -huh. if I would have invite, be invited in your house uh -huh. for dinner and I would steal your silver. Uh-huh, you know, yeah. So same thing uh, that he, he saved my life and then I should come to him you know, and say, hey, I, I'm hard off, give me a couple of hundred dollars, you uh -huh. know. That would have been the last thing that would have even ended my thought. Right, yeah, and that's and very We never thought. went to any organization here when we came. The only thing at the beginning, I went to the Council of Jewish Women to find out was a job and said, as I said before, go west, young man, or go east, or go south. There's uh -huh. nothing in New York, you know. Uh -huh. New York was still on the, out of fringe of the Depression. 1938 when we came, mm -hmm. and uh, so the Council of Jewish Women was recommending that you go other yeah, places no, other no. than New York because New York was that out of New York. New York uh -huh. is oversaturated. That was the only thing what I what I knew from by myself too, you know. Uh -huh. And and at that time it did look more promising in the South in terms of the manufacturing business for you. Then. Come again. It's, and the South looked more promising. Yes, for well, the I, manufacturing business. I, I didn't even know what the house was. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what, what heat and humidity was. You know. <laughs> and now you I, know that. When <laughs> you come from a climate, from a European climate, come here, that was the only time when I came and it was 100 degrees and humidity was 100%. In the morning, I went to the factory. Automatically, I started to cry, you know, like if you. Uh, 
cook with with onions, you know. Mm -hmm. You can't have it not, you know, that was the only time that, uh, but really hurt me, the temperature, mm -hmm. the climate, the humidity. It is very hot here. <laughs> no, not the work. <laughs> what? Not the work. Uh -huh. I took to the work, you know, uh -huh. but I couldn't the take humidity. to the climate, or the climate <laughs> didn't take to me, I don't know. Uh -huh. how else it was not so humid in Germany. No, no, mm -hmm. no way. Maybe one or two humid days. Mm -hmm. We were uh, 1983. We went to Switzerland, and uh, it was very hot there too. And uh, we went to a hotel there, and we ate. And I asked the man, "Why don't you have at least some fans?" He said, "What you see here that is once or twice a year, or in two years, that gets so hot here. Meanwhile, outside the f he had aquarium." You know, where they had fish in it, the fish came up all the belly up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this was in 1983 when you went back to Europe? Is that no, in 1981 I went to Germ back to Germany. Uh-huh. And, and I find all my school friends here. Oh, you did? So I made a reception, it's the ones who were still alive. So I made a big reception for me. And uh, we got in contact with one of the girls whom I knew from my school time. And we are still in correspondence with her. Mm -hmm. We owe her a letter, by the way, and she writes beautiful letters. And, and I say she writes it beautiful. When they say a letter is not uh, like about ten or twelve pages. Ten or twelve pages. Uh, with but each letter. small written and with a handwriting, you know, like you had a bookkeeper done it before they had a typewriter. You know, that's the way she writes. Did you see many changes when you went back to your hometown? Very little. Is that Very right? Little. No, it grew a little bit, you know, from maybe from 5,000 to 8,000, but uh, otherwise it was the same I, like, like I left it. Mm -hmm. There was very little uh, in 30, 40 years what changed there. The synagogue uh, the, that was the built in 1929, is yes. that one still there? No. No. It was sold, and right now they have a memorial plaque uh -huh. put on it, you know, that here was a synagogue, and so on. Matter of fact, I think I have here some bit of papers of it, but I will uh -huh. later on give to the okay. archives if they want them. Yeah, oh, I'm sure the archives will want them. What about the Jewish community? In your hometown, is there what is the population of the Jewish community there nowadays? Now? Zero. Zero. There's nobody there anymore. So the friend that is writing you now from Germany yes, is I is not it, Jewish. No, no. Okay. And uh, as a matter of fact, she's a girl. We had three girls in our class, and all three girls are in correspondence with us. Oh, that's wonderful. All three of and you had mentioned before that some of your things were sent over from your friends in Germany, like some of your papers and that sort of thing were later sent. Is that, did you say that uh, that earlier in the interview that some of your, uh, some of your papers and some of the things that you had in Germany yes. were sent over later by friends? No, I. I later on of the synagogue, that one picture of the old uh -huh. synagogue, well, I had to write up in the paper and say, cut out that uh, paper and uh, that oh, synagogue. I see. What I showed you, you know, that is a cut out from a, from a newspaper. As I brought it, you know, they had a ceremony, you know, and they put in a play, you know, bronze uh, remembrance that the mm -hmm. synagogue was standing. That's it. But otherwise, they sent me papers, whatever, newspapers, whatever is going to happen, you know, around this. Uh -huh. What was it like to go back to your hometown? What was going through your Very mind? Very apprehensive I was first. But then when I was there, I felt like I was home. And it just felt good? Not good, but uh, not bad either. Uh -huh. you know, it was a f I can't describe it. Uh -huh. you know? Like you say, with one eye you laugh, with one eye you cry. Uh -huh. You know, where I saw my grandparents' house and our house, you know. Well, my son who is an architect, when he saw the house, I said, Dad, I didn't know that he had such a big house here, you know. <gasps> and uh, that was so modern and stuff like that. So your son went back with you? Pardon? Your son went yes, back we, with we, you? Yes, we met in Europe. Uh -huh. We met in Europe. He came from England and we met in Frankfurt. 
And that was the first time that he had been to your hometown. Right, right, right. And now, now my daughter-in-law is there too in England, you know, and uh, she comes quite often to Germany where she has to give some seminars. She gives from England, yeah. She gives seminars. Yeah. In Germany. In Germany, yeah. Uh huh. What kind of seminars does she give? Oh, uh, she has something with. Uh, I really, I, I really don't know yet exactly what it is because it goes. Some of the stuff she can divulge because it's on the uh, secretary on the secret act of the government is very, very weird. Oh, okay. Now this is the one that just had the baby. Yes. Okay. Okay. So it's coming here to Nashville. <laughs> um, let me ask you about during your resettlement into the United States. What were some of your initial feelings? My initial feeling was when I brought uh, in Natchez, Mississippi, when I took my ten dollars to the bank, I felt like a millionaire, <laughs> like a real millionaire. You know, I figured uh, that's fantastic, you uh -huh. know, and uh, that was. It sounds as if you put everything kind of behind you, like yes. this is what I have to do now, right, right. and I can't think about, you know, oh, what poor was, what was yeah. one period, you know. Yeah, that Just this like is the way it is. That's the way it is. And at such a young age, you were thinking that. I think that's very admirable as well, that, you know, you were able just to take the situation in hand. What, and could, have, what else could have done? Go in the corner well, and cry and say... Uh, yeah, that's right. You could have put. been extremely depressed. Right. Well, sometimes I was dep depressed too, but about the, the other reason for my parents, you know, that they were still in Germany. Uh-huh. And uh, when I thought on that, and sometimes, you know, I hear that broadcast that what the uh, Hitler's speeches, some of them were, turned, were uh, what should I say, you could hear in English here too, you know, they not in English, they say original. They broadcast it here in... in uh, in the original language here, and you know, that, uh, I uh. remember that uh, one day I went to work and I saw uh, somebody in a pretty new car and he had uh, the German Hitler on, you know, and uh, I went over to him, you know, and he was a refugee too, he was a salesman. So, uh, that was it. Right. right. It's been very difficult to have your parents. Right. over there and not knowing what was going That's to right. happen to and them. And running against time. And run, yeah. Right. Did I give you that letter from Senator... Uh, from who? From Senator... Uh, from, from the Senator, yeah. All right. This well, one? Is yeah, this the one Pat you're Harrison, speaking yeah. of? Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Right. And uh, so you had to, as soon as you got to the United States, did you start working on their entrance into America, or working on the paperwork to get them over here? Oh and yeah, paperwork and telephone uh, calls and cables and back and forth, and uh, I just I have three or four cables left. I must have been 40, 50. That must have been so wonderful to see them when, when they, they finally came over. Make it, right. I bet right. you were so glad. Right. Yeah. I can't, you can't describe it, you can't describe uh, when you came over here and has nothing uh, in your hands, you know, and have to start a new living and have the worries about your parents, you know. Yeah, and, that's uh, right. All that uh, you you didn't. If you would look back, you would be depressed. You couldn't do anything, you know. And you could, so uh, you just couldn't. That's right. You couldn't be depressed uh, because you had to. Can you much imagine to today? I don't know. I don't know you, you know. But uh, if you would have to go tomorrow to France, don't know the language, don't have no money. And uh, here you are. But when we're here, at least we figure at least nobody's going to kill you. That's and right. That is a yeah. value in itself, uh, undescribable. Let me have a sip of water here. Since you've come to America, have you felt a sense of home here? Yes. I worked myself in very fast. You worked yourself in very, in very fast? very fast, yeah. And you have a number of friends here? Yes. 
And your oh. children are, your daughter's in California, is that right, correct? Right, right. And I your have four, son? Wonder, four wonderful grandchildren. Oh. And so do you get out there much to see them? And Unfortunately not. You know, I'm not the one who's uh, going on big trips anymore. You know, uh -huh. I'm 78 years old and uh, I'd rather stay home and let them come to me. Uh -huh. My daughter, uh, daughter and all my son are coming from England next month, hopefully. So everything works out all right. In terms of the uh, Jewish community, you feel, do you feel support here from the Jewish community now that you've been here for a while in terms of your well, friendships? What do you, what do you understand on support? Um, when there's a crisis in your life, if there was an illness in your family, would there be uh, people coming by with uh, dishes and to yeah, spend yeah. time yeah, with you and that hospital, sort of yeah. thing. They come and visit. And they come and visit. Right. And, um, it, and, and in terms of uh, the non-Jewish uh, life that you have here, do you feel like you have assimilated well and feel comfortable in the Nashville business community? And yes, I, I'm, I'm retired now, you know, but I had no problem. As a matter of fact, I have a lot of Christian friends here. Mm -hmm. Non-Jewish, a lot of them, especially through my radio, you know, as I come to the house and uh, sit down and speak with all over the world and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so this is your home now. It feels it feels like your home now? Yes. I, I, I mean, if I would go back to Germany, I would have to re-evaluate everything and uh, uh -huh. uh, turn everything all the other way around, you know, but make a turn of 360 degrees. You know, what I'd like to do right now, unless there's any other special comment that you, anything else that you want to say about your experiences, it would be nice to see the um, papers and if you could talk me through some of the papers that you have here. Yes, but I don't know whether we have so much time left. Okay. Oh, how long have we been talking? <laughs> oh, maybe another 20 minutes. We have time, another 20 minutes. We have another 20 minutes? I think so. Is that right? Okay. Now you've t you've told me what these papers are here. Okay. Do we need to stop mm -hmm. first? Oops. Yeah. If you just well, if you just hold them up where I can see them while you're talking. All about right. Them, you know, mm -hmm. you scoot back oh, okay. Sit back I'll scoot sure. back then. You you can just hold them hold them out like this. Oh, yeah, that'd be fine. Uh -huh. Okay. Your arms get tired. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I find very, when I was in Natchez, Mississippi, I found very well help from everybody who uh, knew the story in, in Germany. And I had to fr I got some friends over there and they were acquainted with Senator uh, Pat, uh, what's his name, Pat Harrison. And uh, he was very helpful. And uh, my brother had some connections. He was engaged to a girl in, uh, whose father was a rabbi, and that rabbi was, well, in World War I, he was uh, very active in the Navy. He might have been a chaplain. And so then he engaged the Navy, the Navy uh, some higher up in the Navy, uh, worked for us too, in order to get our parents over. That was a very, very hard thing. And we knew that uh, the deadline, and uh, we wanted to bring our grandparents over. We couldn't make it anymore. Tell me, we, can you tell me about this letter? This letter is uh, given to me. You can have the letter. Well, that's fine. I have a Do picture you? of it. Can you just tell me about it? I can tell you about it, OK. He, he can read it. You might not need our Do you want book, me to huh? read it? Well, or? I, I did so to get the letter on there and what it, I need this for him to tell me the story. Okay. Why? Well, our good friend, Mr. Laub, has forwarded your letter for further reference to your mother, to your brother Eric in Cuba, and your parents and your grandparents. I have been glad to comply with your request and in this connection, back to advice that Miss Blanton, my secretary, informs me that Rabbi Speyer and Joe Lodge, Rabbi Speyer was a father-in-law 
of my brother who married later on his daughter. And Joe Lodge, my brother, was in, in, in his office this week in Washington. They conferred also with Senator Byrd's office, who is cooperating in the, to the limit. Uh, assuring you of my continued efforts to be a physician, I am Pat Harrison, United States Senate, Committee of, of Finance. Finance. So we had, I was very lucky to get help all over like that, you know, and uh, here I am, three months in America and uh, speak with uh, Pat Harrison, called him in his office, you know, and uh, I had some gold too. Yeah, you know, definitely. But did. you had to have it, otherwise, uh, what would you do? <laughs> you know, if, you are, if somebody throws you in the water, you grab a straw, you know, and try to save yourself. And uh, here are some of the telegrams that went back and forth. Can you translate the ones in German? Yes, I can. I res he sent me a telegram in English, no? Oh, this one's no, in English. No, that's German. Received a letter today stating that father Mother and Eric are all in our hometown. Now we say they were saved, they were back from the concentration camp. Let's stop right here. And um, can you just tell, uh, do you mind repeating what you said that the telegram said about your yes. Eric and your. Yes. Received today a letter stating that Mother, Eric, I said, mother, father, and Eric are all healthy in our hometown, in Dieburg. Shall okay. That now. You tell me when. Okay. One. Okay. You can just put them down there. Another telegram that I have. Let me translate it first. Or you want to first see it and then oh, translate? Just go ahead and read it, then you, read then it. you can show it to me. Received cable from Holland. All are healthy. Try at once to get permission for parents and grandparents to immigrate. And please put all the rush on it what you can then please give us some ideas what we can do from from our end. Make some more efforts in Washington for grandparents. Here it is. They take take it. They can't hear it. Uh -huh. If you just hold it real still for me, if you can. Now who sent who sent this to whom? That was sent to me. They all came to me. What I have, what I had those, those letters, after they received them in New York. You have got this one? Mm-hmm. There's another one here. When the brother of my when the brother of my uh, mother came arrived here. Uncle and his wife and John, that is a baby, arrived well. Eric, that's my brother, came home from the concentration camp and father's uh, release will be awaited very, sh awaited very shortly. In meanwhile, the order was given that he should be freed from the concentration camp.
Ja, das ist in Englisch. We confirm New York collected $740 account passage Lisbon, New York for Samuel Lodge and wife and uh, said in that number in d -Burg. We hold reservation for steamer Siboney, February 14th, American Export Lines. And I finally made it. Finished? Mm -hmm. And then those are only four cables what are being saved. And I can give you, I have three of them, I think I have, where I have photocopies of it. This needs to go here, because that's the original. That is original. Isn't that an original? That is original. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you want to show this too. It's a, the well, I can do that. The synagogue and you as a young man. Well, you want to make one, put it on one, wait a minute. Hold, hold that picture up of you. Can you hold that so I can see you there? Like this here? Mm -hmm. I have a better picture on my uh, driver license. Oh, that's right. Hold it a moment. Translation. Maybe you can just describe what that is, is while English? you hold it. Yes. Uh, that is an order from the Obersturmführer, from the Gestapo, from one of the highest Gestapo people in Germany, who ordered, after my parents were returned with a ship, uh, on the ship, from uh, Cuba, said no harsh measures should be taken against them. And uh, coming out of a man like that is uh, really more like a miracle than uh, can be described in words. That was the same uh, Heinrich Müller who is described several times in William Shirer's book, The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. And uh, we are eternally grateful that our parents got saved and uh, even though they had to go back on uh, terrible hardships to their hometown again, but no harm uh, was done to them because uh, once the SS man, uh, Sturm, Sturmtruppenführer, gives an order that is uh, very well, uh, better, better, very well uh, uh, complied with, or else. And in this case, it was in favor of uh, my parents and those other Jews who were on that uh, boat. I do not know what happened to the other people, whether they went back or whatever happened to them, or if they went back, whether they were later on uh, put to the death camp or not, is un it's unknown to me. I only can hope that they got safe too. But it is a very big question here if they had the facilities that we're lucky enough to get the papers in time to 
get out of Germany. Very good. You can keep that. I have this several, one can keep. Okay. several uh, copies at home. And what are some of these others here? This, this one in particular. What's that? Mm -hmm. If you want to get a passport, you have to make an application, and that's an application. And uh, if there are any, my father had one uh, part of his uh, thumb missing, and that is you know gives the details. It's just an application for a passport, that you could get a passport. Have any more questions? What we have okay? a dinner date? Tonight. Oh, you haven't. Are you getting hungry? No, I have a dinner date. Oh, you have a dinner date. What time do you have a dinner date? Really, it's open, you know. But uh, I have about, I would say, about ten, twelve more minutes. Okay. Well, I just have a couple more. Okay. Is there anything else that you'd like to show from those papers? Well, not right now. Not I have right a now. lot. I have a lot of papers, you know, about the Jews in Hesse, you know. So, it's, uh, but that has really nothing to do with the Holocaust oh, because okay. it was before, from the time till nowadays. Uh -huh. okay. If you want to, you can have it too. But uh, thank you. If you have any more questions, yeah, um, I think this is a real important question about. Uh, what the impact your experiences have had on your children or in the way that you have raised your children and what values have you tried to convey to your children has a part of your experience in living in pre-Nazi Germany? For the longest time they didn't want to hear about it. They did not? They did not want to hear about it. As a matter of fact, my brother Eric he never talks about what happened to him in the concentration camp. I heard some never. gruesome stories, but I can't verify it. I don't repeat them. He never talks about when you ask him, he shut up. He just closes up. He doesn't. And uh, my children, uh, say, so think it's, it's gone and forget about it. Mm -hmm. so I do not want to hear. May, my son, no, he's in the, back in England, he's nearer to a scene, he comes more out with it and finally he wants to know more. But my grand grandchildren say want to know. Your grandchildren want right, to know. Right, right. Uh -huh. We had our grandson here during the summer. He's 19, 18 or 19 years old. He wants to know. He likes to find out. You know. My son now makes more too. He makes family uh, uh, trees and stuff like that. He wants to know what the story is. But before, so I really didn't want to know, and uh, they said they didn't want to hear it. It was too gruesome for them even to, to stomach it. What about Eric? Did your brother Eric ever yeah. open up about? No. He was here uh, for the high holidays, and I asked him, would that forget about it. Let's talk about somebody else. What about his children? Does he have children? No, he's just, he has no children. He's not married. Uh -huh. Do you think it's made any, your experiences and your family experience, do you think that it's made an impact on your uh, Judaism, on your faith, on your religious practices? No, not with me. Not, not I, with no, you? No, I was, had the same face when I had well over there as I have it now. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm a little bit uh, less orthodox than I was, and that was more for the purposes of integrating 
with the lifestyle here, yes. and just in changing your rituals, but not your belief or your faith. No, I didn't really change much of the uh, my rituals. Uh -huh. Just said I drive on the Sabbath. That's more, and uh, you know, whatever is electric and so on, you know, you shouldn't really do it. And said other, but otherwise, uh, say my prayers daily. Daily. Mm -hmm. What about your wife? How, how did her experience impact uh, the way that she brought up the children, or on her faith? I don't think that makes any difference. It you doesn't. Know, uh, okay. She uh, came from a very liberal congregation where she lived in Jena, Germany, and she became more mm -hmm. conservative. Mm -hmm. You know, so we we met, so met in, the middle, huh? in, in the middle. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's good. I, Jack, I know that uh, you want to get on to your dinner date. Okay, go ahead. And uh, this, this has been very meaningful information. I know that Ruth would probably like to have all these things that you can give for the archives. Yes. And that would I mean, be important. And maybe we can talk to you more one on one. Yeah, I'm one, willing to come on another day. What's that? I'm willing to come on another day oh, if good. you want to. Okay, good. I, I didn't know what was requested, what was not requested, but uh, I'm glad to come over another, another time, wherever, or if you want to come to my house uh -huh. with the crew, it's fine with me too. I think that Annette uh, Levy Rant can, you know who she is, the librarian over know, the Annette, archives, right, yeah. will probably want to go through some of these as well. All so. right, anything that you want, I'm gladly uh, okay. available. Okay, that's good. That's good. I appreciate it. Oh, this is very uh, fascinating, to say the least.